Can you imagine, all of you welcome, can you imagine if we were up there in the James Webb telescope trying to adjust it while the whole universe is watching? So this is not the biggest problem, but I really don't expect things to go easily. I look at Kenny's face and I just want to tell you that this was this young person who is able to do this although not so well today used to look like this Wait, that's Joni. I found out that having a baby is the best gift of all because you get to draw them. This young person who is now doing the broadcast was this, and he'll read the title of it. Let me introduce you to young Kenny. This is Kenny, and nine months old. I did not know she was going to do this. Wait, the first one is when you were in the hospital, born. Yes. Oh, okay. Wait, I have to just shrink. Okay. This is me in the hospital. Isn't it a miracle born. who one we are old. born as and who we become? He understands machines the way I don't. Obviously not too well. And this is me at nine months old. Okay, now let me begin with the program. Mm -hmm. No, the others are... Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today I'm going to do something entirely different. And it's all thanks to Facebook. And I am connected to the universe, to the whole world, because of Facebook. That didn't exist just a few years ago. And one of the miracles that happened to us is this book about which I will talk. You know, I think I was saved from reading this when Kenny was young because I would have been in terror all the time. When he was, I guess, 18 or 17, he made a deal with us. He would go to college if we allowed him to hitchhike first to America. We didn't like the idea. Our little boy out in the wilderness of America without a car, only two feet and a knapsack. If I would have read this and Eric would have read this, we would never have let him out of the house, not even out of the door. I told you in every program that I am trying to learn who we are. The base was how do people need to hurt each other constantly? Why is there a war? Why did Hitler chase me out of Vienna? Why do people kill each other? And I thought that if I draw and paint everybody that I meet and get their stories, Maybe they'll realize you don't have to hate. You're losing so much if you don't get to know people. But thank goodness I didn't know what this book has been teaching me. First of all, I love the book. I'm going to read something to you. Kenny, I did bring my glasses didn't I? I had them with the computer on there.
No. I'll go look on the table. Okay, would yeah. you? And I'll open the correct page. I'm going to begin with the author's note, which is difficult without my glasses, but I have to read it. Crossing the overland frontier from the fierce jungles of southern... Oh, thank you, Kenny. Do you want me to read it? Do you want me to read it? No, you will later. Oh, yeah. Sure. On the other hand, let Kenny read this. Just Kenny, the complete author's note. And if you get tired, I'll read the other half. But it's fabulous. Crossing the overland frontier from the fierce jungles of southern Thailand onto the sudden smooth blacktop of northern Malaysia became a comedy for some, a tragedy for others. Clearly posted during early April 1976 was the following. Malaysia welcomes bona fide tourists, but not hippies. You're therefore advised at all times to dress, behave, and live decently in hotels as becoming a bona fide tourist. If you're found in a shabby, dirty, or indecent cloth, or living in temporary or makeshift shelters, you will be deemed a hippie. Your visit pass will be canceled, and you will be ordered to leave Malaysia within 24 hours, failing which you will be prosecuted under immigration laws. Apparently, being a hippie is a crime in itself. Hidden meaning, the hippie species has been banned in Malaysia, but sometimes Malaysian immigration isn't sure who or what is a hippie. The solution to this vexing national security dilemma S-H-I-T, stamped in the passports of those unfortunate souls who lack a designated identity. Suspected hippie in transit. And that, by the way, was exactly how my son looked. And all his friends looked like that. And... They've all become these wonderful friends of mine whom I admire, who speak up for the correct things to help people, who help people in their professions and in their daily lives. So maybe it was necessary to become a hippie in order to break the rules which didn't work. During the hippie time, Suddenly, textbooks did not just show American Indians as people with the tomahawk taking the hair off people. Suddenly, because of the 60s and the changing of the school books, we took their land away. And Personally, women suddenly being told they don't have to wear brassiers was also wonderful. In my mind, this period of time changed the nation and perhaps the world. I see us going backwards in many ways, but this did exist. And Also, when Eric and I took our children and we traveled, we stayed in places where Kenny would say, if it doesn't have a swimming pool, let's keep going. And we never stayed in expensive places, but they had to have a swimming pool. And I remember one night counting how much money we had left and making a family decision. Do we find a place to sleep tonight? Or do we have a really wonderful meal and sleep in the car? And we voted unanimously. We'll sleep in the car, but let's stop at a really big restaurant. And we did. And somehow or other, 
with my head on Eric's lap and my feet pressed against the front It was a wonderful night and we loved it and our kids at that time could twist their legs and not cry in pain but I want to speak about language this book made me realize that there is no way in which we know what people mean when they say a word because everything they're saying goes back into experiences. Every word has a private meaning. If I say the word hippie, I think of people who changed the textbooks, who said women don't have to keep wearing brassiers. To somebody else it means my kid who only wears grungy clothes and stinks because they don't wash. It's how we interpret a word and how we deal with it. Today, this book helped me. My grandchild and his friend were coming to visit me and I love that. But they walked in with a monstrously big dog. A monster. Big mouth, big everything. And that big monster had already ruined the couch. And I said, don't bring the dog. And that dog had also tried to come near me. And I'm fragile and 93 years old. And when he just went like this, I shivered. Today that didn't happen. They walked in with this monster and with a cage. And they set up a cage. And he lay in there peacefully. And we ordered pizza. And every once in a while, either Jesse or his friend would take a piece of crust and drop it in. And this monster dog said, thank you, in dog language. And I thought to myself, First of all, in this book, when he speaks, because this was in the 1970s when he wrote, when he did this and wrote it. Kenny, is that the time you checked? The 1970s. So you met the same people, except you met them in America, and they were cleaner. When he describes the dirt there, the cows and the dogs roaming the streets and the poverty and the dirt and the roads which you couldn't pass. I thought, why did he want to travel there? And I suddenly realized, because they could. They didn't do this when they were 93, like I am. They did it when they were young and fresh and their legs moved well. And they could climb a mountain and know it. So today when I read this, because I've been reading it for a few days, he sent me this book. But he's going to send me three more because it turns out that he is going to self-publish three more books of his travels. And so I think of that's the age where it doesn't matter if you sleep next to seven people. Eric had to do that in concentration camp unwillingly, but he lived. And they wanted to see the world and didn't have money. But they traveled. And so today when Jesse and Angel came in with this monster dog, I thought of the book 
And I thought, so they walked from the railroad, which is a good 15 to 20 minute walk, with a dog and a folded cage, a big cage, because this dog was <laughs> Goliath, because they're young. And this book taught me that we each see the world differently. And it has a lot to do with physically how old we are. And I don't want to sleep in a dirty bed, but I don't dare to think of what the hippies, my son and his friends, slept in in the youth hostels when they were lucky. And I, this book affected me so because the three of us, the two boys and I had a wonderful afternoon because they saw who I am so that when any dirt fell on the ground I just pointed to it and they cleaned it. They wouldn't have noticed it but I did and they heard me and they cared and I thought to myself it's because they decided to see my language. And I accepted them because this book has said to me, you can never understand somebody unless you listen. And I looked at their faces and I saw the joy in them. And they looked at my face and they saw the joy in me. And they saw the joy in the dog when they got the crumb from the pizza. Um, I want to say one more thing. And Martin, I look forward to yourself publishing the other books. Okay? And there are lots of comments when you're ready to hear I'd them. love to hear them. What do you want to say what you were going to say? The what? Do you want to say what you were going to say first? Oh, just that... As he gets them, I, I want to say, help me to learn the language of each of you. Because especially when I do this book, no, not a book, when I finish this painting, I'm going to speak about everybody in it. And I don't know how to go about this. So, the world is evolving with more machines being able to do more. It'll take me at least to the end of next year until this painting is thoroughly finished. Oh, let me just tell you one more thing. Um, this lady over here is wonderful. Her name is Marsha Eisman, and this is her husband, Michael Eisman. And since this painting is only of good people who do things for others, I was telling them what I intend to do. And Marsha picked up her phone and she called Karen Adamo, who works for the Historical Society, but doesn't just work for that. She is the story. She immediately came over and is helping me to plan the boardwalk because everything changed here. This area, when Jesse, this is Jesse with the camera, when Jesse took me down here, it was loaded with cars which sold things, ice cream and pizza and everything. And there was the boardwalk. Now it's gone. Big buildings are rising here. And they shield us from the boardwalk. And I said to Karen, Karen, help me. I'm changing history. I'm going back in this. 
but I can't afford to do something which wasn't true. So Karen is going to give me tents, pictures of tents, with the people who ran them in photographs. And this will be the history of the day when Jesse took me here. Not the trucks, because it's too late for that now. This is the only one. And this one. Okay. I love the comments. Sure. Now, it is 7.30, but um, can we run 10 minutes late? Oh, sure, if it's okay late? with everybody. Okay, let's assume it's good. Okay. You mean I talk that much already? <laughs> no, no, no. We had problems at the beginning. That's why we'll run another 10 minutes. I love it. Yes. So Fran Rosenberg is watching. And there is Fran. <laughs> She's not finished, but she will be. And John Terracuso says, we see you. In other words, that was when you finally came on. Penny Pinsky Ellis is watching. Carol Hodkin says, we're on. Tammy Smith is watching. Marilu Bilgray de Rodriguez is watching. Oh, I'm so glad, Marilu. And she says, hi, Cousin Hetty. Hi, darling. And Julie Williams is watching. Julie. And Marilu says, hola, hola. Hola. And Penny Pinsky says, hey, Hetty, we miss you. And Jill Heinzman is watching. Amy Lauren, Sue Rosenberg Malloy, Jill Heinzman, and Julie Williams says, hi, dear, Hetty, Ken, and all. And Ju Shirley Baker is watching. Oh, I'm glad. And Amy says, always so thought-provoking, our Hetty. We all love you. And I love Shirley you back. And Shirley Baker says, hi, Hetty, love you and miss you. And Lauren Roth is watching. And John Terracusa says, hi, Hetty, hi, Ken, hugs from California. Hugs back, John. Mary's watching. Oh, good. Mary was... I She's my granddaughter. And Marilu is saying, Marilu says, listening is our key to understanding. And Julie says, I love when you talk about books on your Facebook broadcast. This book has clearly sparked some great insights and memories. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. And Jill says, thank you, Tammy and Tracy, for sharing Hetty. Penny says, please hello to my friend Faye who is watching for the first time. Welcome, welcome. And See you every Monday. Beautiful. And Tammy says, Jill Heitzman, 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 she is the universe's gift to us. Okay, I before we show the drawings, I've got to tell something else. Again, Facebook. Kenha came to me from Arlington. She discovered me because she found out that I had written about the Lower East Side. And she was here, and she gave me, among the many goodies she brought, but she gave me this. Can you read what it says, Kenny? Speak your mind even if your voice shakes. This is such a gift because I realized I was going to speak about hippies and that I could even say the words like one should not wear brassiers. I, who in Panama went to St. Mary's Academy for schooling, Swiss nuns, they will forgive me for what I said about Brazil's. One did not mention these words. I want to just say something about Kinha and I formed a friendship which is more more than family can be because we see things the same way and we shared the life can you show this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
all said. Okay, we shared the life of Eric with them. This is, she's very pretty, first of all, and she's so delicate. You wouldn't believe how much is in her head. She is so bright. And, and, first of all, I shared this, what Tammy and Tracy taught me about the universe, that the universe knows what people must get to know each other. And so they put them together in the weirdest way. I found Kinha through Facebook. Did they invent Facebook for me? <laughs> because here, these two gave me a philosophy which made me knew it was right for her to meet me. That somewhere in the universe it was planned. I have only four minutes left. Is there anything anybody needs to say? Or could, can you show more pictures? Well, Marsha Bard Isman says, Hi, Hetty, we love you. And Yola Pataka says, is watching, and she says, Hello, Hetty. Oh, Yola's family's here. You could, could Yola just see the sign? Shore Road Gardens. Costas. Pitakas. You know how we became friends? When I walk every day, unless it's raining, and as a matter of fact, once it started to rain, and she ran after me with two umbrellas, one for her and one for me. And But the beauty of their garden is so magnificent, and we're going to do that garden here. And she says, that looks beautiful. So, um, here's Hetty. That was me when I was a little girl. My father loved art, and he had both Reggie and me painted by an artist. Should I show Grandma's bedroom? Oh, definitely. Tell. Explain. Do you want to say something about it? I. This is sort of sacred. It was when my mother was dying. That's her in the bed. And Kenny signaled to me that it's time. Am I right? Oh, then, then, then show these sure. if there's still time. Because I wanted to show a period of our lives where we had to wear masks. And I. I took friends when we first started to wear masks. Mm. And I read their names. Yes, I will. <laughs> Lisa. She teaches dance therapy. And when she speaks, even her eyes dance. Lisa Wizzle. And she's going to be this person back here. The one who's waving her arms. Where's that? With the yellow shirt. Hmm. And then, thank goodness, the masks disappeared. Not for good. We still need to wear them. But, I mean... 
I was going to face a world of only masks. There are only a few of these that I'm showing. And Marilu says Aunt Paula about your mom. Oh, because of her, you and I became friends. Who is that? Bernard. Oh, Janine, your husband. Bernard. Who is, thank goodness, able to understand German. So he's my translator. Doesn't say. I, who does, who is it? I don't know, but I'll show it. Show it. I think that's Fran. The first one I did. What did it say in It says Linda on the on the file. Oh, okay. Fran. We're almost done. Who is that? That's Fran. Oh, that's Fran. Okay. <laughs> we shiver on the outside deck. But the joy of great conversation is worth it. Yes. Goodbye. I love you all. And thank you. Just thank you because... I love Monday nights because of you. Thank you.